uh, excuse me, <clears throat> we're going to make a title page in GIMP for our final project. We'll use this title page as the basis for the title page on every sheet. Um, you can tinker with this a little bit if you'd like, but I'm going to show you how I would do it. First thing I'm going to do, File, New. I'm going to set this to inches. I want it to be 11 inches wide. I want it to be 8.5 inches tall. And I want to make sure that I'm at 300 DPI in advanced options, and it is. Hit OK. I tend to zoom out a little bit so I can see the whole sheet, make sure. Oh, let's try that. Um, yep, that'll work. All right, so what I want to do is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in whatever drawing I want to use. Typically, I would do the perspective first. Um, and so let's get the perspective. You should have this sale saved someplace on your drawing. Open as layers. In my case, well, that's it, but I want to do just to be sure. Okay, class perspective, color scan. Okay, now I've brought that in, and I you might have named it color final because I do have the black lines over this one. Um, if you'll notice, the drawing pretty much fills the sheet, and it's a little bit crooked. So I'm going to go ahead and First, I'm going to straighten that out. Tools, transform tools, rotate. And I'm just going to grab it. And that looks a little better. Rotate. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the guide because I don't need it anymore. I'm then going to make the drawing a little smaller so I have room to put a title on there. I can always go back and make it bigger later on. Tools, Transform Tools, Scale, and I make sure the chain's clicked so it goes equidistant. I use my Move Tool, and I bring that up. And if you'll notice a couple other things, I have quite a bit of background here. Notice the difference between here and here. So I thought I'd gotten rid of that in the past, but apparently I hadn't. But that's OK. We can fix that. So let's go right there. And let's keep it in the class perspective layer. We're going to go colors, curves. And let's try bringing this over one bar. Just do it until the gray goes away. And you can see it coming up there. One bar, two bars. The problem is, you'll notice the further I move it, the more the color gets washed out. So I'm going to go probably only about a half a box over or so. You can almost see where the spike is there. So let's just go over to about there. It looks like the background's pretty much gone. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring this over to darken it up a little because it lightened up. I don't want to get out of control. It's not like we're doing the black and white. I would maybe bring that over a box or so. That's probably pretty good right about there. OK. Now, if you'll notice, we don't have the same background that we had before. It's gone, that gray. So if you, want, you don't want the background on there. Let's make sure we click into this layer for now. Let me zoom out. At this point, I want to save this. File, Save As, and I'm going to call it 2023 
class color perspective and I'm actually going to go class final color perspective and we're going to go save it. Now we're saving this as a GIMP file All right, now I've got that saved as a GIMP file. You can see it up there. Now let's start putting a title on it. To do a title, first thing I want to do is I'm going to get my text in there. I hit the little text icon. I do my text in black. I like the Optima font. I don't even know if you'll have it on yours. Um, you can pick any font you want. You can scroll down. I tend to use fairly simple fonts. Um, I don't like getting crazy with them. I don't want them to be distractive, distracting. Um, so I'm going to stick with Optima, which I like, if I can find it. And a lot of ends there. Oop. Optima. Optima size 0.25 inches. Well, I don't know what's, how good that is for a size, but let's go ahead and draw a box. I'm going to put that all the way across, and I'm going to start typing. And what I want it to say in this case is L A N D. Oh, that's way too small. 112C final project. Now, again, it's too small, but if I triple click, I selected all the letters there. It was 18 pixels, and I'm just going to keep going and going and going and going and going. I'm going to go at about 50 pixels for now. Okay. You know what? I might make it a little bigger. Triple click. Let's go 60 or 70. I'm going to go 60. And this is just a, I don't want the title to be the most important part of the drawing. Now I can read it. And I'm going to put a few spaces in. And I'm going to put a date in it, which is the date it's due, which I'm going to check right now, which is going to be May 2nd. So we're going to type in May 2nd, comma, 2023. All right, and then I'm going to put a few spaces over there. And I'm going to go Peter Tennant. All right, now I want to space that out differently. I think I can drag. No, I can't. All right, so how would I space that out? I'd like it to be a little wider on the sheet. And to help me, I'm going to put a guideline uh, halfway in the middle of the page, which is five and a half inches. I'm using the, or close to it. I'm using the ruler up there. There's the middle. So I know that, and I want to bring that in a little bit. Let's put a guide here. That guide is over. And let's put it a half an inch, and then let's put another guide here, another half an inch. And I'm going to size my box to be a half inch in on both sides. Again, you can eyeball a lot of this. I'm also going to bring it down on the page a little bit. I'm trying to leave plenty of room for my drawing. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click in here. And I'm going to just add spaces till that May 2nd is kind of centered in the sheet. I'm going to click in front of my name. And I'm going to push that until it's all the way over to there. That works for me. I click in another layer to make the boxes go away. And now what I do, type text again. Make another box. And I'm going to type, 
But notice it's 18 pixels again. And we were up at 60. I'm even going to go up to 90 for this one. For my title. Okay. Click in the box and I'm going to type perspective view. Okay, that looks good. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to you can do this a couple different ways. I'm going to bring this right over to that line again. I'm going to make this box a little smaller. I don't need it quite as big. And that works for me. I'm going to get rid of these guides because I find them helpful when I need them, distracting when I don't. I use the Move tool to get rid of them. All right. I also want to put in a stripe. I like putting in a, a stripe underneath this. So how do we do that? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer. Down here we hit the plus sign where it says create a new layer. Layer name. Well, last time I named one, I did do this. Title stripe. Hit OK. Visible's fine. So now we have to draw a line, and I want to use a red line because I like red lines. So I'm going to go ahead. To draw a line in GIMP, you can use a lot of different tools. I know for certain you can use the pencil tool or you can use the paintbrush tool. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and use the paintbrush tool. I'm going to change this color to red to get a red that I like. Oh, I like that. Hit OK. Now, for brush width, this is set at 8. I'm going to bring that up to 20 and see what happens. I'm also going to set up some guidelines again. I want a guideline to the left of my text a little bit because I want my stripe to go beyond it. I'm going to put another guideline to the right of this text. And I'm going to put another guideline where I want my line to go, which is going to be right about there. I click on the paintbrush. I click it once here and release. I hold the shift button and just follow the line until you go to this guide and it'll stop. I then click again and there's my line. Now that line looks a little big to me and the red looks a little darker than I'd like. So I'm going to go Command Z. I'm going to change the pixels down to 15. And I'm going to change this color by clicking up here and make it a little more vivid. You can see it shows the old red and the new red. Hit OK. Again, I'm in my brush tool. Click on the corner. Shift. Click again. I like that line better. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move those guides so I can actually see the line without those blue dash lines all over. All right, I'm okay with this. With a couple, I want to make a couple little tweaks. One, if you'll notice, the line the title stripe is closer to LAND112 than it is to perspective. So I, I, I would, I'm going to move the line up in order to do that. I click in the title stripe layer. I click on move tool. I make sure the finger goes away. I click it and I can pull it up a little bit to right about uh, there. And you can Use your arrow tools to nudge it. I'm just tapping with the arrow tools now to just move it a little bit. And I'm going to call that good. Good time to hit save. Next thing I'm going to do, now that I have the title block on there, what I want to do is, I, I think I can make this drawing a little bigger. We're trying to highlight the drawing, so let's make it as big as we can make it on the sheet so it still looks good. Click in the layer that's for the perspective. I can shut that off to make sure. That's it. Tools. 
transform tools, scale. Make sure the chain's closed. And we can just bring that up. We can bring that over. You'll also notice that my drawing's going over the sheet up here, my this layer, I don't care. Let's try scale. Oh, I like that. See, it tends to fill it, although I will say that it's getting a little close to perspective view. I can fix that by clicking in that layer, clicking on the move tool, making sure that it's the finger has gone away, and I'm going to nudge by using my arrow keys and just bring that up to there. I might move it over a little to the right. And we're going to call that good. File, save, and then I'm going to go file, export as, select file types. Uh, let's see what we got. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save it as a PDF, which is portable document format. I'm going to click on that. Uh, yep, I'm in the right folder, and I'm going to go export, uh, da, da, da. just hit export, I don't change anything. That worked out well. Now that I've got this, and this is done, and we can actually go to our... files, whoops, and I see a problem already. It didn't save to where I wanted it to, so I'm going to do another export. Make sure I've got it in the right folder. File, export as, hmm, Oh, there it is. No, it's there. We've got it. Cancel. But it's not showing up. Give me a second. All right, I seem to have a missing file, which is why we check this. I'm going to try exporting it again. You can't see this because I'm clicking on another screen. Final project demo. Let's go to GIMP, File, Export As, Select File Type. It's already in. PDF. Oh, it's because it's on the desktop. I see why. All right, we're going to do a little change. Peter Tennant, Dropbox. I moved it to the wrong folder, which you could do too. My class, class 223, final project demo. We're going to go export, export. Now, I had also made a mistake where I saved the drawing file itself, so I'm going to fix that right now. I can show you what I did. I have a bunch of uh, documents, nothing there. Hmm. It's not in downloads. Well.
You know what? We're not going to worry about it. Because what I'm going to do, just to be sure, is I'm going to go ahead and save this again. Just the XCF file. Fi, save as. That's an XCF. It's not in desktop. We'll go through all this nonsense again. Because I want to have a copy of both the GIMP file and I want to have the PDF file. So there's my class. Class 2023, final project demo, save. If I go into Finder, just to make sure, and I would recommend that you do the same thing. And I look, you'll see I've got the final color perspective in XCF, final color perspective in PDF. If I click on that, now I've got the title drawing. It's just a single PDF file. And in addition, I do have, I have saved right here, the final colors in XCF file. Well, once you've got that done, now we're going to go ahead and bring in some other drawings. So I'm going to go into GIMP, File, Save As. It's in the right folder. Instead of Class Final Color Perspective, I'm going to go Class Final Color Side Elevation. Now, I haven't drawn and colored this particular elevation, the final elevation that you have. Um, so I'm using one from a couple years ago, and you'll see what I mean. So I go Save. You'll notice it says Final Color Side Elevation. I'm going to go to where I brought in the class perspective, and I'm just going to go ahead and delete that layer. Delete Layer. I'm now going to go File, Open as Layers, and I'm going to bring in side elevation. So there's my, again, this is not the right building, but it is a side elevation. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to go ahead and scale it. Transform tools, scale. That looks pretty good right there. Eh, I can bring it up a little bit more. That's good. All right, hit scale. Hit move. Let's bring that over here. Let's go down here where it says perspective view. Double click on that. And we're simply going to I double clicked and it grabbed the word and I'm just going to type over that side elevation and I delete the view. If I click on another layer now it says side elevation. Now notice I've got a scale here so I've got to put some numbers on for the scale. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not real crazy about where the scale is on this drawing, and here's where GIMP can be handy. If I click on this, get in the layer for the side elevation, so it's that layer. I'm going to go ahead and use a rectangle. I'm going to select this scale. I'm going to go Edit, Cut. Now it's gone. Now I'm going to go Edit paste. There it is. Came up as a floating selection. I can go to move. I can drag this right over here. I like it better over there. Or maybe even... Nope, I'm going to keep it over to the right. Okay, so if I click in another layer, I can right click on this and say anchor layer. And it should be 
back on the old layer, which is great. Now I have to put in my text for the scale. So I believe this is going to be 0, 8, 16, 32. So I can either type that out on its own, or I can simply copy this layer, right click, duplicate layer. I use move. I make sure I get that. The old layer stayed right there. I triple click here, or try to. Okay, and I'm going to type, I triple clicked and that selected all the letters, zero, space, 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 eight, space, 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 16, and I'll even put the foot sign by these. How's that sound? Zero feet, eight feet, 16 feet, 32 feet. Now, if you'll notice, it the zero lines up, but the other ones don't. I also don't like the text this big. I want my title to be a little bigger, so I'm going to triple click. And instead of making it whatever that was, I'm going to drop it down to, say, 40. Let's see how that works. Nah, it's a little small. Let's go 50. Oops. Triple click. 5, 0. Not 450. 5, 0. Click in there. It still says... Let's do control Z and let's try triple clicking. And unfortunately, I can't see the arrows here, which is upsetting to me. But I can highlight it again and we'll try 5 0. That looks a little better. That looks about right. I click in front of the 8. Add spaces, space, 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 till it lines up with the 8. We're pretty close. Click in front of the 16, till it lines up with the 16. Click in front of the 32, till it lines up with the 32. And we're good. If you'll notice over here, I've got a little grundu. There's a bunch of cleanup I could do on this drawing. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but... You'll notice I've got this blob right here. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Make sure I'm in the right layer. I'm going to just put a rectangle around it. Edit. Cut. And it's gone. Select. None. I'm going to zoom out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then I'm going to go ahead and export it as a PDF. Export as PDF. It's already in PDF. If it wasn't, you could do it here. And it's my color final. Uh, it's going to be final color side elevation. not perspective. And we're going to go export. We'll hit that again. Hit export. With any luck. We should have final color side elevation XCF, final color side elevation PDF. Let's make sure it worked out. And there it is as a PDF file that I can combine or print or send to friends. Again, this is not the elevation that you're drawing. You're drawing the one of the house that I gave you. But I wanted to show you how to import it and title it. So what you've noticed is 
once you've done the first title page, file save, you can use that as a base sheet for every title page after there. And it, it, it amounts to the first one takes a little while to set up, but after that, it's simply a matter of saving it as a new drawing, be it an elevation, side elevation. Let's say you do your perspective first. Then you could do your site plan, save it as class final color site plan, and then you could save it. Once that's done, you save it as that in the PDF, and then you save it as class final site elevation, you save it as XCF in a PDF, and then you save it as class final front elevation, you save it as that in the PDF. And then what you will have is you will have a GIMP file for each one of your sheets, and you will have a PDF for each one of your sheets. And you really only had to lay out your title once. And the titles will be consistent on all four sheets. So it will all look like it's the same project. Good luck, and I look forward to seeing your finals.